Okay, so this little tutorial, we're going to, um, using a 3D environment Unity, we're going to be able to make a simple inventory system where we pick up different objects and then we're able to throw them. So um, I am going to call this thing, what should I call this? Pick up and throw. Um, we'll use character controller, skyboxes, uh, standard assets, terrain assets, the normal stuff. And then we'll create the project. So some of this at the beginning we're going to go through kind of quick because it's the same, same sort of stuff that we've been doing for this entire series of videos. All right, so I am going to create a train here. Um, we also create some light. And inside of our train, oops, size this. Um, inside of our train here, we're going to paint it, uh, we'll edit our textures, add a texture, and we'll find some good dirt. That looks good. Beautiful. Um, then let's add a first-person controller because we're gonna, you know, walk around and we want to pick stuff up. So we'll add him there. Oops. And then let's raise him up a little bit. There he goes. And then I'll delete our um, default camera. Um, and then I'll add a skybox to this guy because um, I find that. Generic blue, a little annoying. And drag in this one. And let's see, what do we have? Maybe. There we go. Beautiful. So we've got our nice little plane here with our beautiful sky. And now we want to add some things in here for our guy to pick up and then throw as he's running around. So um, we will do that. And we're going to do that by just adding a couple spheres. Um, so I can create 3D object sphere and here it is. Perfect. Um, and if we run <clears throat> here we see our ball and it's got some properties to it because we you know we're crashing into it. Um, I want to be able to add uh, different um, two different spheres, one that's red, one that's blue. That way we can kind of keep track of how many of each one we have and then see the difference when we're throwing them later. So we're going to need to texture these things um, with the different colors. <clears throat> um, so uh, the way I do that is this, we need some kind of texture. I'm just going to duplicate this, one of these skyboxes. Um, there's probably better ways to do that, but uh, that's how I choose to do things. Um, and duplicate this one, and I'll call it red. And then, so now we have these, these textures here, and I can go over and change the shader to just Bump Diffuse. And, um, and then I'll be able to set the color. And why will it not let me change the properties of this thing? Component, add component, mesh, mesh render, materials, if we add blue. Should let me change the color. Hmm. And it's not. Oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. 
There we go. All right. Let's start this whole thing over. Okay, so we created uh, these new materials down here by duplicating this eerie sky. Um, and then what you got to do is you got to actually click on the little sphere right next to the word blue over here in the inspector, and it'll make this thing pop out. And now I can, you know, create this, make this thing color whatever I want. There we go. So make that blue. And then here's our red one. Um, change it to bump diffuse. Click over here and uh, change it to red. So again, I'm clicking, you know, right now it's a red ball over here to the left where it says red shader. And that'll bring up this little properties window where we can um, select the color here. We'll make it, we'll make it red. All right. Um, so back to our scene where we have our sphere here. Um, it's got this mesh renderer here with a default shader um, on it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this component and then add back a mesh renderer. Um, and then inside of here where it says materials, I'm going to set that. Let's make this guy blue. I'll just drag it over here and make it blue. There, now it's blue. Um, and so I can call this thing now over on the left. I can call that a blue sphere. Um, and then we can create a new one. Sphere, bring this guy out here. Do the just going to do the same thing again, but we'll make this one red. Um, delete this, add it back, and with red. And now we've got a red sphere, so we can call this thing red sphere. Um, and now I'm going to go and make some prefabs here: a red sphere and a blue sphere, and then we can place these all over. Um, our scene. Now a couple of things that we want to um, do right now if I these are going to be the objects that we run around and you know pick up and right now if I crash into these things it's you know it's a solid collision so I, I don't really want that I just want to be able to know if I've collided with one of these. Um, so on this red sphere I'm going to make it a trigger um, and apply it to the prefab, same with the blue, I'll make the collision a trigger. Um, the other thing that I want to do is we need to identify when we crash into these things. If we've crashed into a red sphere or a blue sphere, that way we know how to update our inventory when we get to that point. So I'm going to give these guys a tag. And right now, over here, they're um, untagged. And we'll tag one red and one blue. Um, I don't know if we've done tags before, but uh, if you can put as many of these things in as you want. These are the default ones that it comes with. We'll go to add tag and we'll just call, uh, we'll make one red and we'll make another one blue. And then um, now when I go back I can, in my list, there should be a blue. And then in the uh, for the red one, there should be also be a red. Um, let me apply that to our prefabs. So in our collision handler, when we actually collide with something, we'll be able to um, get the tag and then see what it is that we collided with. All right, so I think um, we're just going to make a new script. So we've got our scene kind of laid out. We've got these guys here um, that we can collide with. And um, now we're going to need to make a script to handle our inventory of all the items that we have. So I'll create a C-sharp script and call it um, item control controller. And I'll apply that to our, um, or add it to our first person controller because he's going to be the guy um, running around. So let's do a couple things uh, just to make sure that everything is working out okay. Um, I want to make sure that our uh, detection of what we're crashing into is working. So I'm just going to make a void on trigger enter with a collider, col, and I'll just do a quick debug.logs, col.gameobject.tag. And so anytime there's a collision, it's going to debug and print out the tag of, that we've collided with. Um, and remember, all of this stuff has to be the same, case sensitive, um, spelling, all that sort of stuff. Otherwise, it's it's not going to work. Um, but let's run and see what happens. Red. Now it's crashed. So I'm down here. It's saying right at the very bottom. It says red. Now I'm, let's go crash into the blue one and see if it says blue. Blue. And over in our console, we see that we've hit red twice, apparently, um, and blue. So 
our collision detection is is look, looking good. Um, and so what we're going to want to do is we want to have some kind of inventory. So let's just say we have a int blue count. Uh, we'll set it to zero, and we'll have an int red count equal to zero. And we want to increment these things every time we crash into something. So that's going to tell us, you know, how many blue spheres we have in our bag and how many red spheres we have in our bag. Um, so we need to do a little bit of uh, of decision here. So we'll say if call dot game object dot tag equals blue, then we'll do something. And then also if call dot game object dot tag equals red, um, then we're going to do something else. So if we've collided with a blue object, um, we'll say blue count plus plus. And if we've collided with a red object, we'll say red count plus plus. Um, the other thing that we're going to want to do is once we collide with these objects, we're just going to delete them out of our scene. So after we do the plus plus, we will say uh, call dot game up, sorry, destroy object all that game object. So we're just going to destroy the object that we've collided with. So if we collide with a blue sphere on the ground um, or a red sphere, we are just going to increment our counter to say how many we've got and then we will delete it from the scene. So it'll sort of look like we we're placing it into a, a bag or something like that. Now if we go back and run, um, really what's going to happen this time is when I run over the red one, it should disappear. And it did. Um, and our, our count has gone up by one for a red. It's not printing out anywhere, but um, we'll find out for sure in a little bit if it's working. Um, so now, yeah, it's kind of like a vacuum cleaner. As we run over these spheres, they're just being deleted. Um, but we're also incrementing our inventory, which is good. Um, because at some point, we're going to need to, um, to shoot these things. So um, this... All of this code is handling essentially the picking up and storing of these objects. Now we're going to need to write some code that will actually handle the shooting or throwing of these objects. Um, and then that's it. Then, then we're going to be done. So um, we don't need to throw the exact same objects that we're picking up. Um, and in fact, it's going to be slightly different too because these guys right here, they're triggers. Um, and we want to, when we throw them, we want to give them some, some gravity. We don't want them to be triggers. We want them to, to bounce around and, and use their colliders and all that sort of stuff. So I am going to duplicate this blue one and name it blue sphere throw. And same with the red. We'll duplicate it and, and we'll call it throw. And yeah, you can adjust these properties in code, but we're going to create two different objects because I, I want to basically say that you know, the objects that you're running over and, and picking up do not necessarily have to be the same objects that you're throwing. So you might pick up a box of spheres, and that gives you, you know, plus 10, but then you can throw um, individual spheres. So you don't have to throw the box that you picked up, I guess. Maybe that's confusing, but that's that's what I'm trying to point out. So these these are the uh, this object and this object here are the objects that you're going to pick up in your scene, and they are triggers. Um, this object and this object are the things that you're going to throw. And the ones that we're going to throw, they're not going to be a trigger. And they're also going to have a rigid body. So we'll add component rigid body. This thing, we will add component and rigid body. So now when we throw these things, they'll be able to bounce and um, uh, look like we're actually throwing you know, some kind of ball or something like that. I'm just going to save. I haven't saved in a while. We'll just call this scene one. All right. So these are going to be our objects that we're going to throw. They're, they're the same thing, just with different physics properties, essentially. Um, and when we throw them, our code needs to understand what we're throwing. So I'm going to say create some um, uh, references or some objects that we will be able to throw. So I'll say public game object. I'll call it red throw. And public game object blue throw. Um, and if I save that, and now we go over here to our first person controller, um, minimize some of these things. So now we have inside of our item controller script, we've got a red throw and a blue throw. And so we can just drag those things in from, from our assets. Red sphere throw, blue sphere throw. And so when we throw, we want to instantiate uh, a copy of these things 
and put them in our scene. Now, the other part of these things that we need to worry about is um, we're going to add a script to these. We've done it before when we did bullets. Um, these things need to know how to move, and we need to tell them you know, what direction to go and that sort of stuff. And so we're going to create a new script that's going to be associated with these throwing um, spheres. And we'll just call it uh, throw object. Um, and we want to attach that to each of these things. Minimize all of this stuff. So we'll have a throw object script on the red throw sphere and on the blue throw sphere. And that's really only going to have one thing in it, which is going to be a shoot method. And it's going to be public because we're going to instantiate these objects from our item controller script when somebody pushes the correct you know, button to shoot something. And uh, then we need to tell it what direction to go. So we'll say public void shoot. And this will be a vector three force. What direction are we going? And then all we, since we have a rigid body already, we'll just say rigid body dot add force. And it will just be force that we passed in. And that's all that happens in this script. Um, and, the, and the rest of it will just be access, creating these objects and then accessing the shoot method. So we can tell it you know, what direction the first person controller is facing, essentially. All right, so, and we've already attached those. So these prefabs that we have have our throw object script on them. And actually, let me go back. I said shoot, I should say throw. We're not shooting these things, we're throwing. Um, so we'll call this method throw. Okay, um, and our item controller, we know about these objects. We just need to hook up the keys um, to know when we're supposed to create these things, and then we will set the velocity um, using this throw method, and then everything is just going to work. So inside of update, I'm going to check for our key presses, and we've done this in previous tutorials, so if you're not exactly sure how this stuff works, you can go back to those and refer to them. But basically, say if um, input dot get key down, we're going to do get key down, remember, because that's going to, if we just did get key, you could hold the button down and um, shoot stuff forever. And we will say key code dot, dot left shift. So I think we'll say, like, if you hit left shift, we will shoot um, blue. We'll just say shoot, throw, how about throw? Got to get my terms right. So we hit the left shift, we will throw a blue, blue uh, ball and... If it's the right shift, we will throw red. And then we'll make our methods. Blue. And then void throw red. And these are essentially going to be the same. Oops. Same methods. So remember our logic is we just have to instantiate an object. So we'll say something like instantiate, uh, what do we call this, blue blue throw. And where are we putting it? Uh, at our transform dot position, which is where our first person controller happens to be. And then the rotation, we'll just say it's easy with, um, with spheres because the rotation doesn't matter, so we'll just say identity. And that's going to create an object. And, um, and it doesn't do anything, right? Because we need to tell it where to go. We have this nice throw object script that's attached um, to our red throw and our blue throw objects. Um, but we need to access this throw method in order to tell it where to go. And um, by doing the code like this, we don't have the ability to do that. Um, this instantiate method is going to return a reference to um, our our blue object that we're creating, and then we can use that to access the throw method of the throw object uh, class. Um, so we just have to save it off. So we can say game object do equals, and we have to do a cast so it knows what it's creating. That's going to give us a game object uh, reference, and essentially that's giving us a reference to something like that's over here. Um, now we need to get the component. Um, so, for example, when we do one of these things, uh, we need to get this throw object component that would show up over here on the inspector. So, by doing this instantiate with this line, it created something in the scene, 
And then now we need to refer to, um, in the scene I'm saying over on the side, sorry, I'm clicking my mouse because there's no pointer. Um, but now we need to access something that's over here um, on the right side in the inspector. And that's what this next line is going to do. Um, we're going to say a throw object. So TO equals uh, GO, which is our game object, get component, throw, oops, throw object. And that's going to get the actual script that's attached to our, um, our object, and then we can say uh, TO.shoot. Throw. <laughs> Got to remember my terminology there. And we need to say that we're going to throw it. And I remember our, the whole point of this method is to say what direction are we throwing it. And that is going to be the direction that our first person controller is actually facing. So we can say transform dot forward times speed. Um, and I'll fix speed here in a second. So this is, you know, what way are we facing? And then time speed says get it going that direction. And I'll just make up here a public float speed. Oops. Equals. Um, let's do a thousand. And that's going to just be, you know, some sort of random number that says how, not, well, not necessarily random, but it is a number that says how fast these objects go when we throw them. So this should throw it, and let's actually, let's just see that this actually runs. Oh, no. Instantiate doesn't instantiate. All right. So I think I had something tied to the left. There we go. So now look at this. I'm throwing... Uh, blue balls all over the place. Um, now there are lots of problems because, and red doesn't work because we haven't put the code in yet, um, our inventory isn't really working because I can throw as many of these blue ones as I want to, not just uh, the number that I've picked up. So we need to do a few things to fix all of that. But um, So what I want to do right here is I want to say if um, blue, what do we call it, blue count is greater than zero, then we should be able to allow these, oops, these things should be uh, throwable. And then we'll say blue count. So this is a blue count minus minus. So that's going to be like our, basically our inventory control thing here. Is we're going to say if we've got some blue balls in our bag, um, take one out of there, create the object, and throw it in the direction that we're facing. And I'm going to copy and paste this um, into the red and change all of this stuff to red. All these blues to red. And now this should all just work. So if I run right now, and I'm hitting my left shift and right shift, um, nothing's happening because we haven't picked any up yet. So let's pick up a red one. Um, so now there's, the red one's gone, and if I hit a right shift, there it goes. I could throw it. And then let's pick up a blue one. Now our blue one is gone, and now I can throw it. And then now... You know, nothing's happening when I'm pounding on the keys because we don't have anything left in our inventory. So, um, you know, probably a good thing to do next would be maybe to put up, like, a heads-up display, like a HUD that tells you how many blue spheres and red spheres you've got. So the player has some idea of what type of inventory they have, or maybe special key pops up a menu and says, you know, you have blue, you know, ten blue things and five red ones or whatever. Um, but anyways, that's a quick uh, walkthrough of how to um, keep track of items and then how to actually throw them later. Um, so, yep. That's